finally, to wrap out this chapter, just kind of framing perspective here with regards to science, given how much work science is, right? We've described a lot of work that goes into obtaining scientific information. Um, it takes a lot of resources to do this. So I think sometimes people start to wonder sort of like, why bother? It seems like there are a lot more pressing things. There are people who are literally hungry and don't have enough food. Why are we spending our time on these scientific studies when we could be directly addressing more pressing needs? And there are, there are some important considerations behind that. Um, we're gonna make a list of some of the benefits of science to society and then also some of its limitations. So with regards to benefits, you know, the fact that scientific investigations um, lead to an increase in knowledge, this allows us to better be able to address a lot of problems that exist. So sticking with the hunger example, um, just the fact that scientific studies have allowed us to significantly increase crop yields, this means we're actually feeding a lot more people nowadays because of advancements due to science. So it's important not to forget that. There's a lot of work that has to happen behind the scenes in order for this help to come about. Um, but science does provide a, a lot of benefits in the long run um, if we invest into it, if we choose to invest into it. So crop yields would be one example. Um, producing better building materials, improvements in, literally, in materials, in their properties. Um, access to better health care, right? We understand a whole lot more about human health as a consequence of doing scientific studies. Providing clean power sources, more efficient power sources. That's just a very short list that's given here, but lots of improvements to technology and um, the human condition have come about from investing in science and doing science. Science does have limits, and we're going to acknowledge that fact right here. It does have limits. Remember, all of um, science is only designed for, for addressing the natural world, okay? So it doesn't address anything about faith or spiritual experiences, that's just, it's outside of the realm of science. So there's a limitation on science right there. Science also, it can't give us the, necessarily the right answers. So if there are ethical questions about something, um, science doesn't have the tools to address that. And it's important to keep that in mind, like with the question of cloning, should human cloning be permitted? That's a question that should be addressed by not just scientists, but that's a question that's relevant to all of humanity. It's up for public debate, not just for scientists to decide. And then finally, actually at the top of this list for limitations of science, um, there's some information that we can't obtain by experimentation. And this is kind of interesting in the case of humans. So usually we do not experiment on humans. There are a couple of exceptions to that. If people are willing to participate in experiments, then sure, we can run experiments with people. But in general, we don't just experiment on people. And so there are limits um, about what sort of information can we obtain with science in the context of humans. Okay, so tying this all kind of together, Science does have some important ramifications with regards to responsibility. Science provides us with a lot of knowledge. Knowledge has advanced very quickly in the past hundred years, particularly um, as a result of using science in order to obtain information. So with that increased knowledge comes increased abilities, right? We can do new things. We can make decisions about things and um, decisions about not just our own personal well-being, but about things that influence everyone around us and the future of the world. So these are really big decisions. Since our choices make a difference, um, it's really important to do our best to acquire accurate information, base our decisions on accurate information. That's why we talked about being a critical thinker today. Um, and just obtaining the skills that we need to, to make these intelligent decisions. So that feels like we've been all over the place today, but this is all just meant to kind of frame what we're, what we're talking about here with regards to human biology and science. So that's chapter one. We will be continuing on next time with chapter two.